somewhere else, <laughs> okay, or straighten out one or the other. But there's lots of things that we need to pray about in this land. Second Corinthians 7. Let's start with verse 1, then we're going to jump down. It says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now that's a lot of heavy language. Let me explain it to you. What, what he's talking about is seeking forgiveness and seeking forgiveness instead of first looking for permission. It's the idea of, well, God will forgive me, so, you know, I'm just going to go ahead. The city of Corinth was a cesspool of sexual immorality. The, you know, if, if, you, if you ever have the chance to go to Corinth, don't look at all the walls. Because there's pictures of stuff going on all over those walls because it was, the, it was known for its brothels. And, and actually, they didn't call it back that back then. They called it, you know, this, they called it worship. You, you would, uh, I don't want to describe, get too far into detail, but, but uh, any, let's put it this way. Anything you wanted to see or do in that way, you went to Corinth. Because everything went, everything was allowed there. Anything you could imagine, they'd accommodate. It was a horrible place, as far as that goes. It was also a very prosperous place because it was on the main trade route. So, but it was a cesspool. It really was. And this stuff had gotten over into the church. We saw that in 1 Corinthians 5, right? Remember 1 Corinthians 5? The, the guy's involved with his father's wife and who turned that one over to the devil so that his soul be saved. Okay? So it was in the church, and, and the apostle said, you have to deal with it. We have to do these things in prayer so the church can represent righteousness. Sinners are, are, are righteous every once in a while when they get mad at us for doing stupid things. They are righteous in that sense, you know. They, we do something that they know is heinous. And they, they get upset because, you know, that's not supposed to be represented out of heaven. And that's true. Everyone has the knowledge of God in them, whether they're a Christian or not. That's why they get mad. They see something, and, ooh, that ain't right. So we have to deal with these things so we can do the fun stuff. Like leading people to Jesus and getting people healed and saved, and, you know, all, the, all that stuff. So anytime we represent someone in prayer, we are called to hit the mark. Bullseye. Hit the mark. So let's finish with this, Romans chapter 8. Did you all get anything tonight? Romans chapter 8. When I was in Bible school, there, there was a, uh, a lady that, uh, this, story was, this story was being related to us, to the students. There was a pastor of a church in, in the San Francisco area. And, and one of the ladies in his church uh, asked if she could meet with him. This is a pretty good sized church. And uh, I don't know if the pastor actually knew this lady or not before that. So yeah, you know, set an appointment and she comes and, and so they're sitting down there and she, and, and she says to him, said, Pastor, uh, several years ago I had a sex change operation. I used to be a man. So now, you know, I've, I've been born again. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. 
serving Jesus the best I know how. So what I want to know is, would it be possible that I could begin to date again? Man, you better have a lot of Holy Ghost going on to answer that question. How do you answer that question? Now, we all have opinions, I know that. But how do you answer that question? <laughs> no, we have opinions. We just don't live in areas where some problems exist. Oh, you want another one? Oh, you, oh, you don't like that one. Okay, how about this one? Uh, I was listening to a, a Foursquare pastor or Foursquare missionary one day. He was talking about how he was over in some country in Africa. And a bunch of the ladies of the church came to him. And, and they wanted to know why all these women in America are, are wearing jewelry and makeup and, and all that sort of stuff. You know, that's, that's, not, that's not right according to the Bible. And you need to go back there and straighten that American women out. Now, none of these women are wearing tops because in their tribal culture, they don't wear tops. They're bare. And he's thinking, how do I tell them what you all are doing would raise the roof in America? <laughs> Show up to church with nothing on top. So how do you deal with these kinds of things? Well, somebody's got the answer. Let's look at verse 26. Romans 8, verse 26. <laughs> Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. That's our weaknesses. That's our, I don't know what to do now. Amen? Amen? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. How's that missionary supposed to tell them people that? Well, I'll give you another one. There's, there's, a, there's a guy that got saved over in Africa, and, and he comes to the pastor one day, and, and he says, you know, I'd like to become more involved in the church. And this guy was, was a member of the tribal royal family. He said, I'd like to become more involved in the church. He goes, but you know, there's a problem there. You know, in order for me to be an elder or a deacon or something like that, he says, you know, I just want to know, he says, uh, is there a way around this one wife thing? Because I've got 26. <laughs> Romans 8, 26, right? Pray. Because if you tell him, no, you can't do nothing. And that guy falls back in the flesh, there ain't going to be no church. Because he's a royal member. And they'll just wipe it out. So what do you do? I'm not saying we're supposed to compromise. I'm saying somebody has the answers that we don't have. Okay? Because this is what Christians tend to do, you know. We got some scripture in our head and we're just going to tell them. Yay or nay or something, you know, because the Bible says blah, 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 blah. If you violate faith, you violate good conscience. Faith works by love. Doesn't faith work by love? So even so, maybe sometimes we have a scriptural answer. It's not the best thing to do right now. Are you with me? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we, not, we know not 
what we should pray for as we ought. Can you imagine any one of those pastors? Ooh, now what do I say? But the Spirit of self maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. There are certain things that I, I am rock solid on in Scripture, and there's some things I'm not real clear on. And there's sometimes I don't exactly know how to apply it in the moment. Because I want to supply grace to people. And I'd really rather hit them in the nose. Or something. You understand what I'm saying? Club them with the Bible. You know, throw the word of God at them. There you go. Verse 28. And we know that all things work to... Whoa, where did that come from? People like to pull that one out of context. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. That's right on the tail end of this. We need to pray because we don't know what we're doing. Isn't that right? We need to pray because we don't know how to address certain things all the time. Maybe we do, maybe we don't, but we should pray first. Amen? We know that all things work together for for good to them that love God. So sometimes, let's go back through them things. You know, the lady that approached the pastor and said, can I date now? Does she love God? He, she, you know, whatever. Does she love God? What about them ladies that Approach that missionary, you know, about the makeup and all of that, and they ain't got nothing on top of them. Do they love God? How about that guy that wants to become more involved in church, but he's got 26 wives? Does he love God? How do we walk in love back? I'm not saying we're just supposed to allow things. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, we need to know what his purpose is. How do we deal with this in this moment in time? Well, Brother Greg, you know, the word's always right. I understand that. And I firmly believe that. But sometimes we need to know how to present things to folks. Did that tribe ever put clothes on? I don't know. <laughs> what about the guy? I mean, what did he do about all of them wives? Now, th let me tell you what happens. If he, if he gets rid of all of them but one, the, the other 25 are going to starve. Because in the tradition of that tribe, if you cut them loose, no man will have them. And if you live in sub-Sahara Africa and you don't have a husband, you're dead meat. So what do you do? And this lady that made this horrible mistake as a man and changed over to something different before she knew Jesus, what do you do? Now, that doesn't excuse anything. But you better have the mind of the Lord before you start opening your mouth. Sometimes the best thing we can say to somebody is, I got to pray. I got to pray and find out. Well, what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say right now. Well, you just spent, you know, a bunch of time telling us about church discipline. Now you're walking it back. No, I'm not. I'm saying you need to know how to do it. Now, if God says to me, you know, after somebody involves themselves in something and I talk to them and they don't want to straighten out, and God says to me, okay then, turn them over. 
I will. Sadly, but I will. Because it's far better for their soul to be saved. We pray for direction until he tells us what to do. We need to know what love is in this situation. Because we walk in love. What is love in this situation? Does love give someone another chance? Or does love say, nope, because if I give you another chance, you're just going to ruin yourself? See? We have to know. We don't know. He does. So this is what I want us to do tonight. We're going to pray that all the people that call this their church home will turn to God. Everybody. I mean there's more than one person that might have a problem? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so we're gonna pray. We're gonna we're just gonna spend a little time and we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray this way though. I'm gonna pray, you're gonna pray. I want you to direct your prayers towards me because I need to know what to do. I need to know what to do. I need to know how to handle things when they come along. You know, unless God makes us aware through a dream or a vision or something, we don't know what's coming up tomorrow. Amen? So, having spiritual oversight isn't always a fun thing. You know, sometimes I feel like Jesus is in the garden. Lord, well, let's take this cup and move it over somewhere else. So I don't like to deal with certain things. Does this make sense to you all? Okay, let's pray.